Wow, so I thought winter was over, but it's not. So I was going to make a video today talking about the cherry blossoms in Washington, D.C., but I don't see any cherry blossoms. We're going to talk about something different. We are going to talk about Instagram. If you're a photographer or any sort of content creator, you definitely want to be on Instagram. But how can you stand out? Instagram has more than 1 billion monthly active users, 500 million of which are active every single day. In addition to that, there are 400 million Instagram stories being posted every day. Photos account for 91% of all content on Instagram. So how can you make your photos, and in particular your grid, stand out from those of all the other photographers? All right, so before I really get into this video, make sure you go and follow me on Instagram at Nicole S. Glass. All right, now that you've done that, let's get right into it. So when people first started using Instagram, and if you've been on the platform for a long time, you know about this, the photos were pretty much uploaded and posted in a square format. Instagram was really popular for having these square-shaped photos. And there's still plenty of people who stick to the square shape and post their photos as squares. However, Instagram is now a lot more flexible when it comes to posting photos in different image sizes. You can post images as a square, horizontally, or vertically. The vertical format is sometimes also called portrait sizing. The recommended size for portrait sizing on Instagram is 1080 pixels by 1350 pixels. So why should you do this? Well, if you actually crop and upload your images vertically on Instagram, those photos will actually take up a lot more space when people are scrolling through Instagram on their phone. This will get the photo a lot more attention, it will get the photo noticed more, and overall it will also make the image look better. Take a look at the difference between a vertical and a horizontal image on Instagram. If I'm using Photoshop or Lightroom, I'll often just crop the dimensions of the photo vertically by like five by four, and that usually is good enough for me to upload the photo vertically on Instagram and it'll look really nice. Of course, not every photo is going to look good in a vertical format, and you'll see that when you start to experiment with different photos. There are some photos that I post that I just cannot make into a vertical format, but if I'm able to, I will. Another thing you'll want to do to make your Instagram grid look super awesome is to edit your photos in a similar fashion. Some people use presets in Lightroom, while others will manually edit every photo. I don't usually use presets, usually I'll manually edit my photos, but it just depends on my mood. If dark and moody is your thing, then try to make all of your photos look dark and moody. If bright and colorful is your thing, usually I tend to lean towards bright and colorful, then make all of your photos bright and colorful. Does that airplane bother anyone? So some people only take photos at sunrise and sunset, and if you've ever seen a grid like that, it's actually really beautiful. And again, someone's grid and their whole entire look can change based on the season that you're in. YouTuber Peter McKinnon, which I'm sure you all know. Oh my God, so many airplanes. I think I'm near the airport. So by the time I finish this video, my mic is gonna be completely covered in snow. So YouTuber Peter McKinnon actually had two Instagram grid challenges where he challenged other photographers to change their Instagram grids based on the season. I think he had a fall photo challenge and a winter photo challenge. And when you look at his own grid, you can see that it clearly stands out based on the season that he's in and it looks super awesome. So if you try to create a consistent look for your grid, that is great. Niching down is also really important on Instagram because people most likely follow you because of a certain type of photography that you do. Either that or they follow you because they like you as a brand. If you're a portrait photographer, stick to portraits. If you're a landscape photographer, stick to landscape. If you're more of a lifestyle slash personal brand kind of photographer where you mix up your photography with pictures of you, then stick to that but make sure you kind of have like a consistent theme going on. Personally, I like to take a lot of outdoorsy, colorful types of photos and I'll integrate myself 
into those photos. So it actually looks like more of like a travel account, but I travel a lot locally, you know, a lot of like driving distance type of traveling. So, so people will often say, oh my God, you travel so much. I don't actually travel that much. I just explore the area that I live in. Anyways, moving on. If you're a wildlife photographer, like my absolute favorite wildlife photographer, Kay Ponka, then take photos of wildlife. You don't want to mix a photo of like a fox and then put it next to a photo of a fashion model and then put it next to a photo of, you know, some corporate networking event. You don't want to do that. That's too much mixing and people are not going to know why they're following you. So I don't actually mix portrait photo shoots I do with my like landscape type of photos. I have actually I have a couple of different Instagram accounts for different things. But the one that I talked to you about here, Nicole S. Glass, is my main account. So if you have so many different interests, instead of just mixing them together into one account, consider creating different Instagram accounts for your different niches that you cover as a photographer. Let me see if I can find a drier spot. After this, I could probably make a review to see if the Canon 5D Mark IV survives water damage. Next, you'll also want to make sure that the photos you're posting look good next to each other. When people are scrolling through their feed, they're only obviously gonna see one photo at a time, but then if they click on your profile to look at your entire grid and see if they wanna follow you, the aesthetics of your grid is going to matter. So if you're taking like five photos of people and then posting them all next to each other and then taking five photos of like landscapes and then throwing in a photo of an animal and like it's it's too it's too disorganized so spread it out a little bit if you for example have like a travel account maybe you want to take one photo of you at a travel destination and then a nice drone shot of that travel destination and then another photo of you somewhere and then mix it up and add a little bit of what you're seeing that's going to create a nice balance and your grid is going to look a lot better. I thought about this a lot recently when I took like a couple of really awesome photos of squirrels. Like I didn't just want to post all of the squirrel photos next to each other or on top of each other. I wanted them to be a little bit balanced so I put other types of photos in between the squirrel shots just to create a nicer aesthetic. So now let's say your grid looks absolutely perfect. It's beautiful. You want people to find it and see it. Obviously, you're gonna to have to use a lot of hashtags. There's plenty of videos on that. You know, research the hashtags in your niche, use lots of good hashtags. But another thing you can do is actually go to other photographers you admire and start being active in the comment section under their photos. Don't just respond with one comment to the photographer, but start interacting with the other people in the comments below. A lot of those people might then click on your account and find you as well. So the more you interact with others, the more people are like, oh, who's this person? And they'll click on your account and look at your grid and they're like, wow, they have an awesome grid. Let me follow this person. So hopefully these tips help you just to improve the overall aesthetic of your grid. As a photographer, it's super important that your grid is on point and that when people find it, they actually have an interest in following you. So don't be afraid to head over to at Nicole S. Glass and say hi. And my fingers are freezing, so I am gonna go now. But in case anyone's interested, this is the beautiful Potomac River, the river that flows through Washington, DC. It's not really a nice river, but it actually looks pretty nice right now. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video.